Outside the Estadio da Luz in Lisbon is a statue. It's a, perhaps the best and certainly the most influential Portuguese player of all time. He was the European Cup winner, a European Player of the Year, and still has one of the most recognised faces in football. And over 40 years ago, he almost became a world champion. Eusebio's career lasted over 20 years. He came from the then Portuguese colony of Mozambique and was the first African to make a big impression on the world game. And he came close to guiding Portugal to the biggest prize of all at the 1966 FIFA World Cup. After beating Hungary, Portugal played Bulgaria and the Black Panther appeared on the score sheet for the first time in a 3-0 win. Well, the first match is always very important for the players. And after we won that, well, we knew we could afford to draw the second game. But we didn't do that. We won against Bulgaria by three goals to nil. I scored in that match and that began my scoring record at the World Cup. It didn't start in the first match against Hungary, it started against Bulgaria. The final group game was against Brazil. Eusebio was in electric form and the Brazilians who had to win were always on the back foot. However, this game is remembered not so much for the brilliance of the Portuguese attack, but for their stern defence and the treatment handed out to Pelé. But Eusebio thinks the brickbats have been overdone. It's very important to remember one thing about that game against Brazil. Brazil was hardly able to field a team. Pelé was already injured, and Garincha as well. Garincha had got injured in the first match, but he had actually arrived from Brazil carrying an injury. Brazil was in no condition to play in that World Cup. When Marais caught Pelé on the right ankle, he went down holding the left knee. He was hit on his right ankle, but we knew it was a knee problem when the physio came on, asked him where it hurt, and he pointed to his knee. The trainer touched it, and he screamed. But there was no argument about the final score. 3-1 Portugal with two goals from Eusebio. In the quarter-final, they'd face North Korea, shock conquerors of Italy. Surely they wouldn't worry the Portuguese. That's not really true, as our coach, Otto Gloria, warned us that there were no easy games. He told us it was a very important match. He also pointed out that we couldn't afford not to do our best. The opening period of the match has gone down in football history. After little more than 20 minutes, it was Portugal nil, North Korea three. It was amazing that Korea managed to score three goals against Portugal. But thank God, thank God that Saint Eusebio looked after us that day. He believed that we could turn the game around. Eusebio scored the first four of Portugal's five goals. By five goals to three, Portugal was in the semi-final. But now they had to travel. They had to leave the North West and Goodison Park in Liverpool, where they'd beaten both Brazil and North Korea, and head south to Wembley. Here they met hosts England with a solid defence and a dubious attack. And here they ran into Bobby Charlton at his very best. Twice he scored in what was arguably England's finest display of the tournament. <laughs> the 
Eusebio pulled one back with a penalty, but he couldn't find the equaliser. Portugal had been defeated. I think that if we had beaten England that day, we would have become world champions. I believe we would have beaten West Germany because people still did not know very much about the Portuguese team. We were still a bit of a mystery to the other nations. I think that if we'd played the semi-final at Everton Stadium, at Goodison Park, then we could have beaten England. The move to Wembley turned out to be a disaster for our national team. Eusebio left the field in tears. He never played in another World Cup and Portugal didn't qualify again for two decades. But the contribution of the Black Panther will never be forgotten.